and we back we are in the new house we are in the new setup and and we still working on it y'all i was finally able to get my mj painting up and two of my jerseys but that's pretty much it uh, the last place had carpeted floors and this place is hardwood floors so the sound is different. We will be getting it fixed, but it was either like wait three more days without uploading the video or try to thug it out. And right now we thugging it out. So yes, it will take some time before the, the hardwood is good and the sound is good, but I wanted to make videos anyway. I got this, which is a coffee stand, but I'm gonna use it for other stuff. Let me know what I should put on there in the background of the video, interchangeable. Today we're doing a challenge that I saw on Reddit called the Big Three Challenge. Simple, win a championship where only three players on your roster are 80 overall or higher, and then the rest of the players have to be below that. But he also throws in a little caveat that they have to be below 80 at the deadline, which is a little bit of a, a, a curveball because some players we trade for as a 79, and then by the, that is by the trade deadline, they'd have overalled up to 80. And now he's saying, nah, you can't, you can't really do that. The first rebuilding challenge of the new house. This is a journey, ladies and gentlemen. We, we tried a lot of new things on this channel now that we got this new house. Also, this house is uh, a lot more expensive than the old one. So if you wanted to leave a like and subscribe, I'd appreciate that. You feel me? It's definitely been a minute, but you know the drill. We randomly select our team. We're stopping in three, in two, and in one. We're running with the Pelicans. Fantasy draft, of course, but we run it with the Pelicans. Big three challenge. New Orleans Pelicans are going to have pick number 23. Okay, like with all of these challenges, I was hoping to get a top pick because it immediately sets me up for greatness. And now that we got pick number 23, I'm just going to go out on the limb and say they drafted me a young team, not a good team, which could be a good thing because we could use those young pieces. You know how these videos go. You know how these challenges go. New Orleans Pelicans, let's see what we got. Or is it New Orleans? See, I've heard, I've heard it different ways. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you listen to Wayne and he say New Orleans. And sometimes we hear people just say New Orleans. Or some people, you, sometimes you hear people say New Orleans. I forget exactly. Our team is Donovan Mitchell, Jared Allen, Franz Wagner, Anthony Simon. So they did draft us a young team other than having like Spencer Dinwiddie and, and Lance Stevenson here. But this video, again, is a big three challenge. Technically, we wouldn't even pass the vibe check the challenge right now because we got four players that are 80 overall and higher plus two players that might progress to be 80 overall once the trade deadline come around so we got a lot to do man we got a lot to do when i'm thinking about big threes i'm thinking about like big big threes i'm talking people that get on the same team in the whole world like why are we allow this to happen oh they just ruined the league that's the type of big three i want to put together i want to put together the big three so good that we have casual nba fans not watching because they say it's unfair you feel me so who could that be? All right, so we got like Donovan Mitchell as a huge trade piece. I like Donovan Mitchell a lot, but again, a big three challenge. I'm thinking 90 plus overalls. He's just not there just yet. So he's a he's a big time trade piece to potentially get a 95 plus because he's young. He's very good. He's a multiple time All Star already in his career. But I'm looking like Luca. I'm thinking Jokic. I'm thinking that tier of player. And Donovan Mitchell just ain't on that tier just yet. Maybe one day. I'm going to go Joel. I'm going to go Jokic. I'm going to go Luka. I'm going to go Kawhi. I'm going to start right there. I'm going to start right there. Those are the players we're going after. Two cent was it? Two centers and, and a point guard and then a wing. One thing these players got in common, we talking complete five-star value, which is not a surprise to nobody. Donovan Mitchell already contractually, all of this makes sense. That's a beautiful trade. But we also got Franz Wagner, who is one of the top players when it comes to rookie of the year this season. He's only 20 years old, and the guy is a bucket. We also got um, uh, Corey Kisper, who's only two-star value, okay? We got Anthony Simons and Spencer Dinwiddie as trade pieces, but Anthony Simons is three-star value. Okay, I'm liking what we got so far. And you give me T-Briz, because T-Briz ain't like that. Not no more, no, not in 2022 at least. A two-and-a-half-star first-rounder, another first-round pick, one more first round pick, Donovan Mitchell, Franz Wagner, Anthony Simons, the three first will get us Nikola Jokic. The big three is starting to assemble, and Jokic is number one on the list. Woo, now that was a hefty trade. I gave up a lot. That team is going to be set up for greatness, but we don't care about that. This is a one-year challenge, and we only got one year to get things done. So I'm not even worried about the fact that we just gave up all the first-round picks, plus a 25-year-old superstar and a 20-year-old all-star, not all-star, 20-year-old really good guy, and then a 22-year-old dude that's averaging like 25 points per game in the last couple months. We ain't worried about all that, all right? We got our guy, and our guy was Jokic. But now that we got that super superstar, we need that tier two. And I think my tier two has to be a guard. I think my tier two has to be a guard, Trey Young-esque. You know what I'm saying? Or 
Low key, Donovan Mitchell would have been a good dude to have, but like Devin Booker. You know, Devin Booker is one of the easier superstar caliber players you could trade for in this game. So I'm going to throw Devin Booker on that list. Matter of fact, let's go after Devin Booker. You can see he's different than these other dudes who's got five star, five star, four and a half star. He's just a four star and he's playing for the Denver Nuggets. Let's see. Nuggets, they got D Book, Tyrese Halliburton. They got a, a team that's all over the place. Actually, this is an older team more than a young team. So they might not even be a, a selling team. But he's making 31 million. We can make that up because we do have Jared Allen here, who we don't really need necessarily because we got Jokic and he doesn't fit the challenge. Uh, we also have like Daniel Gafford. And then a f we only got two first round picks left because we gave up three to get Jokic. That's fine. We threw two, two first round picks and two seconds into this one. And you got yourself a deal. Devin, okay, Devin Booker's not coming to the team with this package. All right, we don't really have the, the assets to get Book at the moment. But if we go like young players. Uh, actually, no, they, they, you're not going to value Corey Kisper more than you're going to value Daniel Gaffer, right? They're about the same. Okay, we need to go get more assets. Gorgi Zhang, thank you. You like a first-round pick in my eyes. Boban Marjanovic, you like a first-round pick. I will waste a first-round pick to get you, Bobby. You know we got nothing but respect for each other. I interviewed Boban Marjanovic last year during the pandemic or the height of the pandemic. And uh, very, just a very cool dude. It was supposed to be, I think, a 30-minute interview. It ended up being an hour because he was enjoying himself so much. He was saying, because they were on the road, again, we in a pandemic, he couldn't do anything. So the fact that he had somebody to talk to was great, and that guy he had to talk to was me. And then I said his name, and he said, you said it perfectly, Boban Marjanovic. He told me that it was perfect. So I don't wanna see nobody in the comments section say, Kenny, you mispronouncing his name, because he told me himself, it's his name, that I was doing it the right way. And that's all I care about. Luke Kennard? I mean, I guess. I know I did give up a second, but Luke Kennard is a decent player that we could throw into a trade package later. First round pick for B-Ball Paul. Okay, now that we got, I think we have four first round picks now. We can talk to the Nuggets about Devin Booker now and say, hey, we need him. The only pro, okay, d book at the two. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. We're gonna have our big three, right? We're gonna have our big three. And what I'm thinking is, after we assemble this big three with these pieces and then these picks, the players that we do end up having, they all have to be like, 78 like every player in my rotation has to be like 78 you know what i'm saying all these first round picks to get Devin booker i threw like four of them things i said earlier he's like the easiest superstar player to trade for obviously not i gave up everything i had but okay we got two players a part of our challenge now the last player what type of player should we be seeking are we looking for a wing that's the only bad thing about trading for jason tate oh i'm sorry we traded for Devin booker's and he's a two so do we prioritize a playmaking point guard or do we feel like we can find a point guard that can run the playmaker role like a Dennis Schroeder? I guess his playmaking is good in this game. Or like a Monte Morris. But Monte Morris is the type of dude that might end up being an 80 overall to trade that line. And in that case, we can't have him. Ooh, the point guard position is actually pretty bad, bro. I would assume it's up to a 78 overall. That lets you know I ain't been playing 2K at all unless I'm filming a video. I ain't no Ayo was up there like that, man. That makes me feel good. Do I want to tr try to flip Devin Booker? to like John Morant. I don't think that's gonna be financially possible for the Raptors, but like, that's what I'm kind of thinking. I think I'd prioritize the guard, the point guard. And yeah, they'd have to make up 19 million, which they just don't have. They have it in Harrison Barnes, but yeah, no, that trade, that trade is so dead. No, that trade won't be able to happen. Even if I had all the picks in the world, it just wouldn't happen. Trade market is Bonds which is understandable because those aren't very good assets. James Johnson, I think some teams out there need an enforcer. So we're gonna pick you up and, and throw you to a team, hopefully for a first round pick, but we are willing to settle for a second, but we don't need players right now. We just need, we need future. Ooh, but no, like a Dorn Finney Smith will be perfect for this challenge. You know what I'm saying? He won't hit 80 overall this season and he plays his role really well. Now I don't know how much of that translates to 2K, but as far as like real life, he's he's nice like that. You know what I'm saying? He just got an extension in real life. Like those are the type of things we're thinking about, bro. Those are type. There's Matisse Stiebel. Matisse Stiebel fits this challenge to a T. He plays for the Knicks. On the back of my mind, I add a Matisse Stiebel, but we don't need to trade for him in this moment. I feel like he's a guy that we can trade for later and still get good value out of. But I did see this first round pick with Stanley Johnson. Yes, we gave up a second to get it, but the first round pick is still more valuable. Herb Jones, another player that I think I want to add to this list. He's also on his rookie deal, just like Matisse, so they'd be easy to trade for. We ain't got to worry about matching salaries because they basically not, not uh, making nothing. I'm going to trade for Jason Preston, who in college in the March Madness tournament, I remember him spazzing, and then he got drafted to the Clippers, and I think he got an injury this season, so it prevented him from actually hooping. Carmelo Anthony for in a second, for a second. 
I mean, I guess we'll do that. He's up to an 80 overall. Obviously, he can't stay. This is really, really bad. Okay, how do we get that third superstar? We, we, we traded for a few picks, which is always a W. But how do we get that third superstar? We got the contracts of Spencer Dinwiddie. And then, I guess, Dayu Gaffer's contract doesn't kick into next season. Bro is still making a million. Oh, it started. It, st it kicks off in 2023. So, he got two years on that, that really good team-friendly deal. So, we got, like, Kevin Knox's $5 million, And we got... Spencer Dinwiddie, 17 million. So that puts us at about uh, 23 million dollars. Quick math. Actually, it wasn't that quick, but math, regardless. And we got to find somebody making around that. I just don't think that's gonna exist in the realm of player that we want. Because again, like I said, I want this player to be one of those one of the players. When you add it up, you're like, man, how did these dudes get on the same team? Maybe it's Darius Garland. He's playing for the Knicks. He's a he's oh. Fred Van Vliet, another one of the players that's making around that realm of money. Okay, all right, we're working a little bit. I think I think one of these players could potentially work out. But does that, if we have in those three players, Darius Garland, Devin Booker, and, and Jokic. Sounds pretty good, right? Are we guaranteeing ourselves a championship appearance? We would need the rest of these dudes, whoever we end up picking up, we need these dudes to be crazy on the defensive side of the ball. I think that's that's what I got to think about. I'm going to the Knicks to talk about Darius Garland real quick. It probably won't happen. I'm just going to quickly trade finder. They're probably going to be like, ah, you don't got nothing I want. They want Jokic. They want Devin Booker. Um, no, don't really want to do that. Ha <laughs> Joke's on you. I got two first round picks though. Ah, okay. There we go. Easy deal. Okay, so is this our big three? Is this our big three? Or do I flip Devin Booker? And try to get a like a the, one of the best wings in the game. Do I flip Devin Booker for like Jason Tatum or something? Even though Jason Tatum's a little overall, but he's a wing. You know what I'm saying? Or do I flip him for DeMar DeRozan? Or do I flip him for like a Jimmy Butler? Kawhi Leonard would be dope, but obviously Devin Booker and Kawhi Leonard are on the same level between the 90 overall and the 95 overall. Or is that, is, or, or do, are we cool with Book just being that dude here? What if I made book a small four? What, what do y'all think is going to happen to us overall? Small four book is about the same. He's just going to be undersized at 6'5". I'm okay with keeping book, I think. I think I'm okay with keeping book. I'm going to throw him in the trade finder. Even though we don't have like a first round pick to attach to him. I'm going to throw him in the trade finder with, um, with Carmelo in a second. And see if that can level us up. But more likely than not, it won't. It won't. There's a 92. Now I'm trying to figure out, can I finagle my way and continue to grow it? Ah, oh, these are the things we go through. Who else was on here? Gary Harris. Anthony Davis has more value, so I'm trading for Anthony Davis, okay? He's not on the team to stay, but I'm trading for Anthony Davis, and we throw him a Corey Kisper in a second. Okay, that wasn't necessarily what I wanted it to be. But what if I threw Darius Garland too? This is the type of big three I'm talking about, where you get a Kevin Durant to pair with Jokic. I'd be crazy not to accept this trade. I know I'm giving up a lot, but we'll make it work, man. We'll make it work. When I say big three, this is what I mean. Not this, but the big two dynamic duo, this is what I mean. Now, Drew Holiday got to get his butt flipped to another team because we ain't really... We Jalen McDaniel, McDaniels is a guy that could potentially stay. He's not going to, but he could potentially stay. But now I can flip... Um, make Kevin Durant a small four, go back to his, his original position before the NBA kind of evolved. And I can flip... Drew Holiday. So where's Holiday? Holiday's right here. I could probably flip him to Shea pretty. Oh, no. Shea's contract doesn't get into next year. I could probably flip him for like Jamal Murray or DeJounte Murray. Something like that. Well, flip him to Jamal. Jamal's lower than him. Flip him to DeJounte Murray, maybe. Or can I get to the point where I get all the way up to Damian Lillard? 39 million versus 32 million. I'm adding Dame to the list. Chris Paul is at 30 million. I'm adding him to the list as well. Um, and then these dudes again on the rookie deal. So, okay. All right, I, th I think we could potentially make something happen. I got to go out and get more first-round picks if we're going to do anything. So we going back in, and Joe Johnson, 40 years. I just saw a clip of Joe Johnson. He was playing for Team USA. I didn't even know basketball for countries, rep you know, being represented by countries and stuff. I didn't even know that was going on right now. But Joe Johnson at 40 was still giving people to work. I saw a clip versus him versus... Uh, they, they were going against Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. And bro was getting his buckets like he normally does. Shout out to Joe Johnson, just showcasing that... It don't matter how old you are. If you can hoop, you can hoop. I'm just going to trade for Herb Jones right now just because he's there. I'll never forget. He got called into the game for the Boston Celtics earlier this season. Took one shot. And it was cash. I don't think he saw the floor the rest of the season or the rest of the time he was there. But that one right there, 
Beautiful. I'm also going to trade for Ayo Desumu right now. I'm supposed to be getting first round picks, but I keep seeing players that I really, really like. So I'm going to have to do my thing. I, I got to trade for these two second round picks and just have them um, be great because they're they're some of the best rookies in this class and they were both for second rounders. So I, I got to do what I got to do. But again, yeah, we do still need to get first round picks. So let me stop. Todd Gibson, you want to come to the team? Sure. Who else? Uh, George Hill, you kind of washed at this point, aren't you? I don't know. Maybe you are, maybe you are. Come to the team and hopefully we can flip you into a second at, at the very minimum. Organizations are being extremely stingy about their first round picks, which is understandable. If it was one general manager calling all 30 teams looking for something, I'd be hesitant to give, them, give him what he wanted to. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously that man is on a mission for something ridiculous. Do I trade for Matisse? I'm going to trade for Matisse right now. We're going to have a bunch of defenders. Outside of our big three, we're going to have Ayo Sumo defender. We're going to have Matisse Stiebel defender. We're going to have Herb Jones defender. We're going to have a defensive-oriented team for show sure, other than our top three who, I mean, not bad defenders. Oh, and I still didn't even get a first-round pick. This whole thing, I was supposed to be getting first-round picks. I didn't get a single one yet. I got two of them. Now we go back. Can I afford to get Alex Lynn? Oh, we can. Oh, okay. We get Alex Lynn. Can we get Reggie Bullock? We can't. Okay, Reggie Bullock is just a little bit too pricey. Um, but hey, good for you to have a standard and not just accept any old contract. If it was me and I was wanted to be a professional athlete and the team offered me any money when I was not making it, no money, I would just say personally, I would just say yes to the deal. Hey, I get a chance to hoop. But nope, not, not him. He has standards. We got three first round picks, I'm pretty sure at this point. Because we still had like these younger players towards the bottom, like Isaiah Joe. If I throw him a Mo Harkless, because he is a young player, some team might be willing to give me a first. There is Frank Kaminsky, who we just traded away. Nicholas Batum, Jalen Noel is low-key kind of a bucket in this game. What's your shot tendency? I've seen games where he kind of went nuts. Shot tendency is below average. Playmaking bad space creator. Do we prioritize him right now? I mean, none of these other trades are giving us first round picks. So we'll get Jalen Noel to be a rotational player too. That's good. But now we got Drew Holiday and three first round picks. Let's go talk to the Brooklyn Nets first because I I think because Jokic is such a good playmaker, I'm okay with going for the guy that's more scoring oriented other than Chris Paul, um, who's more pass oriented. Let's go get the scorer, who in this case is Dame Dalla. We get Drew Holiday. Obviously the contracts make sense already. We got pick number one, we got pick number two, we got pick number three. And then we're going to have Corey Kisper, who I, I say specifically for this deal. You give us back your worst player. In this case, it is LeVar Stevens, who I gave you earlier. They still say no, but I'm giving you another second. And they still say no. Like, are you going to see Paul George is more valuable? Let's go find out. I mean, he's a higher overall. Jones, and you give us back Paul Millsap, little old self. Where you at, Paul? Paul Millsap, they still say no. I think the Damian Lillard trade might be dead unless I can again flip Paul George for another player to get him to 90 overall club. They want Matisse in a Chris Paul trade. Ah, I don't have to give up any first rounders. Can I somehow convince you to take the first rounders? And they want David Nwaba. Oh my God. Imagine calling for Matisse Thibel and I counter with, with a lottery protected first round pick of David Nwaba. You're like, sure. Thank you. That's a steal. Christopher Emmanuel Paul, welcome to the team. I love you, my boy. You're my favorite of all time, but you're not even safe. We're throwing you in a trade finder too with a first. And I said I would rather have a scoring guard. So I'm getting one. I'm getting one. I I'm, I'm getting Trey Young. You know why? Because I have Matisse Thibel, who even though his overall goes down at the two, he's going to be our starter shooting guard and he can cover up all the mistakes that can happen on Trey Young on the defensive side of the ball. All right, okay, okay. I'm in love with some of the things we've done so far in this video. If we're talking about a big three only, when nobody can hit 90, oh, I'm sorry, nobody can hit 80 other than my top three, this is a good little point guard rotation. I don't really need TJ McConnell, I might flip him. Shooter guard rotation looks pretty decent for me. Small forward backup, Danny Green, shh, nah, we're probably gonna flip you. Power forward, I mean, this is not bad, bro. I, I think we've done a decent job. Now, I will go through every single position to see if I, I see some other players that are sub-80 that I think can really help us. But, like, yeah, I'm looking. Um, out of all of our options, it's basically Gallinari, it's P.J. Washington, it's, it's, it's Otto Porter. I think Chris Boucher is the best option there, low-key, based on contracts and everything. And we're looking for a backup for KD. Well, Malik Monk could be added to the list. Max Struss could be added to the list. Those guys can shoot. I'm trading for Laurie Marketing and Dwight Howard. The way I'm thinking about it, Dwight being 35 years old, he's not going to hit 80. Even with an overall morale boost, he's only going to go up one. And then Laurie Marketing is a backup small forward we'll take right now. Uh, we don't need Justice Winslow, and we don't need Alex Lynn. 
but we could use a little bit of actually i don't know where we could use help bro again i can't hit 80s i can't hit 80s on none of these dudes so I'm, i don't i don't even know if there's much of an upgrade to do this might be just our squad Ooh. i mean i don't think we need a backup shooting guard but hey if we wanted to to really buckle in on defense again like i said earlier i mean oh max struss but we already got a small four um, if we want to buckle in on defense, like I said earlier, Gary Payton the second is a guy, you know, even though we already got Jalen Noel and we already got Matisse Thibel, I would add Gary Payton the second into that because honestly, Gary Payton the second probably is going to, yeah, they want him to start, which I ain't even mad at him for. Jalen Noel, I think I'd prioritize having Matisse Thibel there. So maybe I'll trade Jalen. Only thing is his contract is basically non-existent. So would I be even smart to even trade him? I mean, I guess we can throw him with... Brent Forbes, who's not getting PT either. Do we need Dennis Schroeder? Who's our backup point guard? Oh, yo, Io is our, our backup point guard. We don't need Dennis Schroeder, bro. I'm okay with the way our team looks. I mean, that's about as good as it gets, right? That's about as good as it gets, right? The only difference is, I'm actually okay with running a nine. Let me go to nine, man. And I legit want my star players to play so many minutes. Like, I'm talking like... If y'all gonna be a big three, we gonna play y'all like a big three. Everybody getting 40. Every, every one of y'all are getting 40. And since Jokic is the highest overall, you, oh, you're tied with Kevin Durant, I guess. Kevin Durant is getting that one extra minute. Let me know how I did, man. Big three challenge. We got a big three and just a bunch of decent role players who go defend. I should probably get more shooters, but we got Larry Market, and I guess he, where does Larry Market his three point shot in this game? You know what I'm saying? It is a B, which is going to put it at a, a literally average at force position, which is not great because I remember early in his career, a lot of us Bulls fans saw him as the next Dirk potentially. Obviously has not lived up to that at all, but not having a bad career, not having a bad career. We started the first couple weeks of the season. We put up a lot of points. We we're putting up a ton of points. Oh, Yoke is going to win MVP. Oh, well, he's only averaging 23, but the triple double through three weeks is kind of wild. Uh, all right, I don't think we're gonna need to make any trades. Oh, we need to go to the to the trade deadline anyway to just make sure that nobody is 80 or plus. Season wrapped, and I didn't show you the deadline because what well, everything was exactly as we wanted it to be. Nobody had 80 overall. We were all 79 with morale boost, and it was great. Luca averaged 37, 9, and 10. Okay, you are a demon. We all knew that, but just seeing it in in numbers like that makes it kind of wild. John Morant averages 32, 8, and 6, a player that we wanted to trade for, but we did not. Jokic is NBA first team, though, so that's great. Do we have two NBA players? Please have at least two. Okay, Kevin Durant is there as well. Kevin Durant averaged 25, 7, and 5.5, and, and then what was Jokic? 24, 12, and 11 assists per game. Got to be the most assists ever averaged by a center. I'm not looking it up, but I'm just going to go out on the limit. It's the most assists ever averaged by a center. As you see, nobody hit 80. Everybody got one morale boost, but nobody hit that, that threshold. So big three challenge, stuck to my guns. We still got the same exact team, and things are looking good. Um, they want I I assume started this entire season. He had to be all rookie first team, right? He averaged 14 points per, right? Wait, wait, Io, come on, come on. All NBA, all rookie first team, great. And they had Dwight Howard starting at the four. I did not write off on that, did I? Did y'all see me do that? Did y'all see me start Dwight Howard at the four? I mean, bro is on fire. So who am I to take his starting job away? But, but what? But what just happened? How did he get? How did we get to this point? I'm not gonna change it unless we start losing, because obviously something was right because we won 69 games. We won a nice amount of games. Okay, we're going against the Golden State Warriors in the first round. Who have Anthony Simons, Donovan Mitchell, Terrence Ross, John Collins, and then Brandon Clock. First game is a win. I almost just simulated the whole playoffs, low key. Didn't even think about it. And we get out of the first round in four. Okay, don't change the white at the four. 2K loves a little twin tower thing, and we got that. This is Luka. I'm afraid now. Luka, the league MVP. Game one is a Pels win. Game two is a win. Oh, they not messing. they're not messing with the Pels. Can we sweep it? Yes, we can. This team lost two games in the first round, none in the second round, so they kind of nice with it. Who do you have on your roster, though? Ben Simmons, K. Cunningham, and Giannis. Yo, crazy. I think that Dwight Howard going to clap up Giannis. Game one. I bet Giannis didn't have a great game. This is not a great game for Giannis. I know it's I know it's 21, 12, and 6, but bro did foul out. That is the Dwight Howard effect, ladies and gentlemen. Game two. Oh, we got to sweep the conference. 
Oh my God, Dwight Howard is real life holding Giannis to some crazy low numbers and we keep him in foul trouble every single night. And foul trouble, I mean, well, we had a couple players foul out. Jeez, Ayo, Jokic, why y'all fouling so much? But guess what? The reason you have a big three is because one dude have a, a terrible game, you got the other two to pick him up and that's what Trey Young and Kevin Durant did and I guess Chris Boucher in no spot minutes since Jokic fouled out. Great. Next. Are we really about the oh okay that's a good yeah I was gonna say the reason they win is if Giannis has a big game and he did all right not a sweep oh okay that's two in a row Giannis again didn't have a good game though Jokic had a 30 20 game but we lost we lost by only two I'm gonna go one more ah that was the wrong thing to do that was the wrong thing to do because I was thinking listen the game that they had just won it wasn't like they was, like, killing a game. You know what I'm saying? They barely got out of there. So, I was in my mind, I'm like, okay, maybe Dwight can do that. And Dwight might be having a good playoff run. Uh, he ain't bad, but he ain't great. I, I need Trey Young. I need Jokic. And I need my big I need my big three to play all these minutes. Herb Jones. He hasn't played a second of – he played one minute of playoff basketball so far. And we're like, go. Go guard Giannis. That's basically what we said to bro. Go. Go guard Giannis. And I don't like that idea at all. I just I just think that's a recipe for failure. Do I just throw KD on Giannis? Do I okay, let's let's go make some some adjustments, man. KD, you're going back to being a full-time four um with the secondary position small four. Because I may need you to play the best defense of your lifetime and guard Giannis. You might be the best option we have. You know what? We can actually check to see what our best option is. They want to put PJ Doge in the starting lineup. I'm not with that. I'm not with that at all. But we can check to see what our best lineup to guard Giannis is. Kevin Durant has an 85. Matisse Stiebel has a 90. Am I about to just do the stupidest thing? I'm, I'm starting Matisse Stiebel at the four. I'm mean, no, I'll start him at the three. I mean, and just have him, have him guard Giannis. Sim cast it. Giannis versus Matisse Stiebel. Please blow these boys out. My heart cannot take us. Yes. Okay. That's a good one. It's closer than I want it to be, but we've maintained the lead for a good majority of this one, and we will go out of here and get this dub. How did he guard you? Listen. Good game for, for Matisse. Matisse probably didn't even score. But, but he didn't. He got a DMP. He got a DMP? Why did they just change everything that I just did? So is that Kevin the Red guarding him then? Oh, my God. I'm so confused. I'm going again. Matisse, please clamp up. I need you to. Oh, that's game. That's game. Oh, they had a little run. They got a little run, but it is not going to hold up. It's not going to hold up. My bro got a DMP when I was telling him to go guard Giannis. And guess what? Giannis, again, had six a six turnover game. Matisse, a DMP. What, what is my rotations? P.J. Doja starting and he, he shot. What are they doing to my rotations? They're... They're setting it for me? I got out of here. Oh, you know why? Because I'm an idiot. The reason why is because you go over the Trailblazers. This is the rotation that they had. So it was my fault. It's not 2K being buggy. It's me being bad. But we do go to the finals to go against John Morant, Draymond Green, and Jonas Valanciunas back in Toronto. Um, I guess we run it with this. I don't like the idea of John Morant guard, being guarded by Trey Young, but we'll see how it goes. Game one is a Pels win. And John Morant had a great game, but so did Trey Young. And a triple double for Jokic. They fighting for the MVP spot. Oh, they fighting. Will you go with the triple double big or you go with the 40 plus point point guard? Oh, they fighting for it. Jokic had the better. Jokic just won finals MVP with that game. That was a game that gave him finals MVP. Yep, that was a game that bro averaged. A 30 point was that oh I gotta I gotta go see. Was that a 30 point triple double averaged in the finals? No, close to it though. A 28 and a half, 15 and a half, and 15 assists. 40 um 64, 61% from the field and demon. Just a demon. I was contemplating whether or not I should trade for him or or Joel, and I might have made the right decision. Hey man, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. Uh new setup popping. Eventually, but not right now. You feel me? I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace.